In the previous video, we saw how to define momentum in special relativity. We formed this displacement vector. So this is um, the difference in space-time coordinates between two closely spaced um, events along the world line of the object. And then we define the momentum by multiplying by mass, and then this is a velocity-like thing. Um, it's displacement over time, but the time is tau, the proper time, the time according to the object itself. So in this video, we'll look at some of the properties of form momentum. So here, this is summarizing um, these results from, from the previous page. And we'll start by noting that the form momentum is frame dependent. Different observers will measure different values for the momentum. And the reason for that is that this displacement is frame dependent. We've, are, we've seen throughout the course that um, different observers will disagree on the um, coordinates for space-time events or the coordinate differences between space-time events. Um, so because these are frame dependent, observers will observe them differently, this is also frame dependent. Tau, the proper time, does not depend on the frame that you're in. It's a property of the object that's moving itself. It's its own time, it's its own lived experience. Um, and, you know, in a sense, like, that is what it is. The, um, you know, it's, it's the time as measured, you know, so here's Beowulf moving through the world. He has a clock, a clock reading here. He has his own proper time. Uh, right, the proper time, just a reminder, is the uh, time between two events that uh, measured by a single clock present at both events. And so there's no reference, there's no um, um, need to re even refer to other reference frames. It's a property just of um, Beowulf directly. All right, so tau, proper time, is frame independent. All right, so the question that we're going to think about now is how does p depend on the reference frame? I've argued that it does, that it's frame dependent, but how does, how is it frame dependent? So how is p frame dependent? Um, okay. So here's what I'm going to do. First, let me just, as a little reminder, write down one of these Lorentz transformation equations, because we're going to need this in just a second. So this says if you know x and t, you can figure out t prime, the time of an event measured in um, a reference frame moving at a speed beta. All right. So what um, what I want to do is focus just on one component of the momentum, because the results are going to be similar for all of the components. So I'm going to do uh, just PT. And so what would PT prime look like? So this would be the time component of the momentum. Um, and I realize we haven't really said, like, what does the time component of, mom of momentum even mean? That will be in the next video, or the one after that. But for now, let's just think of this maybe as a mathematical thing, the time component of a momentum. Well, what is that? That would be m and a time interval measured in the moving frame. And tau doesn't get a prime because tau is the same for everybody. That's a property of the object. not has nothing to do with a frame. All right. So dt prime, um, what if I wanted to express that in terms of t and x while well, I have this here. Right? The Lorentz transformation tells me how to do that. Um, and here I'll be doing it not with necessarily absolute x and t, but with um, dx and dt intervals. So let's just apply the Lorentz transformation and see what happens. So instead of dt prime, I'm going to have gamma dt minus beta dx, and this is all over d tau. Um, all right, so now let me do a little bit of algebra to um, simplify this. So I'm going to um, 
pull this gamma out front of everything. And that, great, because gamma multiplies this. And then m I'm going to distribute through for a reason that I hope you'll see soon. I've got gamma. So this is m dt d tau. minus beta m dx d tau. All right, now check this out. m dt d tau, hey, that's just pt, the momentum in the unprimed frame. m dx d tau, hey, that's just px, the, moment, the x momentum in the unprimed frame. So uh, using this, this becomes gamma pt minus beta px. And let me just write that all here. pt prime gamma um, Okay. So we have that result. I could do the exact same thing with px prime, and the math would work out almost identical, and I would end up with this. I'm going to write this for the sake of completeness. px prime is gamma uh, minus beta pt plus px. So these equations, I hope, look familiar. They're just the Lorentz equations, the Lorentz transformations, but instead of x and t, I have px and pt. So what this shows me is that the four momentum tra transforms um, from one reference frame to another, just like x and t transform from one reference frame to another. And that's not shocking because we built um, the four momentum out of dx and dt. Um, but notice, I guess, the key, maybe one of the key things is that we have d tau here, which is frame independent. If this transformed as well as this, then things might get messed up. Okay, so the moral of the story and uh, the first property of the four momentum to highlight is that it transforms just like um, the uh, x and t do according to the Lorentz transformations. Um, so in the next, so that's one property, in the next video we'll look at another property of four momentum and we'll find an invariant kind of like the space-time interval.